Hello, everybody. Welcome along. My name is Benjamin Bloom. This is Benjamin Bloom Football Channel. Please leave your bias at the door and join us for a look at the League One playoff semi finals. And I need some help with this one. So we've brought in um, a, a lovely gentleman who I've worked with before. This is Nappers, Cods Vlogs. You can call him Ben as well. Um, say hello to everybody, Ben. How are you doing? I'm very proud to be here. Thank you for having me on, Ben. And uh, excited to talk about League One. And uh, hopefully in a couple of years, we'll be um, you'll be discussing Fleetwood. But for the time being, <laughs> we'll have to deal with it on this League One show. But I'm glad to be here, mate. Fleetwood versus Ipswich in League One. The, the, the dream the dream is real, my friend. Maybe in the Championship one day. There you go. Um, so look, Ben is a Fleetwood vlogger, but he's pretty much the equivalent of me in League One and he's broadened out to do um, lots of League One stuff rather than just Fleetwood. So um, this is basically a look at what we might get in the Championship in, um, well, about 10, 14 days' time when the playoffs are all done. Before we get into that, let me just say a quick thank you to our preview show sponsors, which are the lovely Donovan Brothers, who sponsor us in loving memory of Michael of South East London, lifelong Millwall fan, admirer of this show. Thank you to the Donovans. Thank you to all of the lovely people on Patreon as well who've got involved. You two can do so um, over there, um, patreon.com slash Benjamin Blue, blah, blah, blah. Super chat, blah, blah, blah. King in the bin, you know the score. YouTube, subscribe, ring the bell. But most importantly, comment, have your say. And I would normally be sitting here as... Um, thinking I'm in a position of authority about such things, but not so much. Not so much today. I'll be um, I'll be bowing to Ben's superior knowledge. Just have a look on the ticker there. That is what is going to be happening in the League One playoffs. So Tuesday night. So this is after the Championship uh, double header on Monday night. We've got Oxford, Blackpool. That's six versus third. Wednesday night, Lincoln versus Sunderland. Which. Um, Ticker's bloody incorrect, isn't it? Fifth versus fourth. We can't have two teams in. Um, and that's going to do my nut if I don't change that. We can't have two teams in third, can we? Right. The ticker is now correct. There we go. Um, and then the second legs are going to be on the 21st and the 22nd. And if you like Ben and you enjoy the show, he might be really nice and come back and preview the final for us as well when we know what is going on. Um, ben, let me just bring up the League One table. Um, and we'll just go really, really big picture. So we talk about Hull and Peterborough maybe a bit when we've done when we've done these games. Just talk to me a bit about, um, I mean, you don't need to mention Ipswich because I've whined and moaned about Ipswich to these poor subscribers all um, all season. But two big teams there, Charlton missing out on um, goal difference and Pompey as well, who had that little surge under Danny Cowley. Can you just um, briefly sort of, sum up Pompey and Charlton. Why didn't they get in? Well, you, well, you look at Portsmouth and the, the work was a hard task for Danny Cowley. Obviously, Jacket struggled towards the end, of 4-1 defeat to Northampton and away from home. I think that was the moment that I thought he had to go and the defeat away at Doncaster. The Cowleys came in and they won the first four games, which is always very good. But after then, they seemed to struggle. And then they lost four of the last eight games. And they, were lose, they lost 3-1 uh, away at Swindon, 1-0 away at MK Dodd. And they lost 2-1 at home to Burton and 1-0 at home to Accrington. Now, no disrespect to those sides. Three of those sides are in the bottom half. Accrington are 11th. You've got to be looking minimum to be getting four or five points out of them. And if you do, you're in the playoffs. And it's been Pompey's you know, season that they've been better against the good sides. They went to the Stadium of Light and won. You know, they went to Ipswich and won. They, you know, came to Fleetwood and won. And, you know, it's just been tail after tail. And you look at Charlton, they were very good in the second half of the season. They had a bit of a, a bad patch. I think they only won one game in 10 or 11 games. And then they went on, I think they went, only lost one game in 15 games, which is very good. They won eight of those, drew six. And, you know, they've got some good players as well. Chuck Taniki scored 15 goals, but he didn't play enough. You know, he was on the bench a lot of the time. You know, the actual rely have goals from Stockley, who came on loan from Preston as well. So, I think both both of those sides got better as the season went on. And, you know, but Charlton next season, I can see Get having a rebound. But I worry for Porter. I think they'll need a, a bit of a... 
kind of a, a clear out and to go again. But Charlton are very un unlucky not to get in with, you know, they can turn one of those draws into wins. They're in, aren't they? There's going to be a lot of clubs in there next season. I don't want to get too sidetracked on this. Uh, my team, Ipswich, is going to be one of them. I've seen Pompey have just, their CEO's just gone about two hours ago or what have you. And there's going to be quite a few who are going to be at the, like, reset point. And um, for the one that gets it right, it might it might open out a little bit next season. And, of course, I'm joined by some teams we've covered this season as well with um, big club, Sheffield Wednesday, um, Rotherham, Rotherham, who always boss League One coming back, and uh, Wickham, maybe with or without um, Gareth Ainsworth. Excuse me. Um, right, let's talk about these four teams then. So we won't get straight into the games. Get your questions in for Ben um, as we go, and we'll bung some up, and then we'll go to proper Q&A um, once we've covered everything. Um, let's just talk about Oxford, and I'm going to bring up on the screen, I've got the... I mean, it's a very, very basic look at the season, but I think it's quite telling. That's the Oxford position graph. Remember, they were in the playoff, they were in the playoff final last year, weren't they? Lost to yeah. um, lost to Wickham. I remember as well, they came quite late last season, didn't they? And yes. when we look at Oxford with our championship head on as well, Ben, we think about Fosu and Baptiste going off to Brentford. We think about Rob Dickey, who's now probably, you know, going to be worth a small fortune if um, London centre-back who can play football, English, good age. Um, talk to me about Oxford and in particular, for someone who hasn't necessarily been following, why the why the slow rise during the season? The one of those sides that they do, I don't know why, they always start slow, Carl Robinson's sides, but they get better as they go along. I think it's kind of he needs to get them all together and kind of they're a fit side Oxford. They go to the end, they score a lot of goals. I think second highest goal scorers in 2021 with 52 goals. And you know, the first 16 games have 16 points, four wins, four draws, eight defeats. Since then, 18 wins, four draws, eight defeats. That's 1.93 points per game. And that's title form. That's what Hull got over the course of the 46 points. But um, I just think it's something tactically that he has to drill into his plays. It sometimes takes a while. I don't think the playoff... I think they were hurt a bit from the playoff defeat because no disrespect, disrespect to Wickham, they should have won that game. Oxford, they were the better side. They probably had the better squad. And they, they probably thought we should Sounds have won like that game. Sounds like a standard Wickham League One victory, doesn't it? Yeah, but but that's that's what good sides do, and that's how you <laughs> yeah. get victories in League One into the Championship. And you know, look at Barnsley. You know, they, they, in the Championship, they they can score goals, but they can also scrape out a one 0 victory maybe when they don't deserve it. So I think that hurt Oxford a bit. But you know, they score goals, and they, if they if the opposition opposition scores three, they'll go and score four. That that that's the way Carl Robinson's sides always play. Brilliant. I always remember. Um, the first ever match review I did was Ipswich versus Charlton in a pre-season friendly. And um, Carl Robinson was a Charlton manager. It was 6-1 to Charlton. And that was when Charlton were in League One. And um, it's the best thing that could have happened for the first video because an absolute train wreck and all the Ipswich fans went and clicked on it to see what happened. So I have first-hand experience of Carl Robinson's free-scoring teams. Here's a look at Lincoln then, um, Ben, who were in fifth. And... I mean, it's fairly plain to see that. They dropped out of the top six once, about round 18 there, I think, all season. They were top of the league going into sort of the early 30s before um, Harlem Peterborough. It's all about time in the run sometimes, isn't it? It's, it's he who wins the last game, not, not, not in the middle of the season. But Lincoln, fairly consistent um, all year, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, their away form was the best in the division. And the 14th best, only lost nine games at home, which you think, you know, some sides losing nine games at home, you can't go up with that. But their, their away form was unbelievable. They won 13 games, drew six, lost four. Um, they, yeah, they did go in a bit of a bit. They lost George Grant, who got 13 goals. Ten of those are penalties, but his influence on that side, I was looking up a statistic the other day, with them in the side, they averaged about 1.7 points per game without them, 1.55, I think it was. So it's a bit of a difference. It's six or seven points in the season. And they, they had a little bit of a break due to the pandemic, a couple of positive cases in their ranks. And then it came back refreshed and started winning games again, and what it's all about. And they go on it on a bit of good form, maybe a bit of 
annoyance that they didn't get that top two with that Sammy Smoddock's dive and Clark Harris for the penalty. <laughs> Your words, um, not mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my word. But um, I, I, I thought that could hurt them. But it's all about how they react in the playoffs and they've got two tough ties and um, they play a Sunderland side that they only got a point out of at the two meetings in the league. Interesting. You come on to Sunderland, who are... Uh... Uh, the one everybody mentions when we talk about coming to the championship. Oh, which team do you want as a YouTuber in the championship? <laughs> Sunderland, please. But a uh, big club, Sunderland. And uh, well, we talk about managers in a bit, but again, uh, labouring in the middle of the season. Um, as I say, we'll talk about managers in a bit, but spot where the managerial change happened um, in that graph. And they come good at the end of the season. Um, we'll talk about star players as well. Is it as simple as um, a little change of regime that um, exemplifies Sunderland's season there, Ben? I think it's, I think it's a bit of both. He just simplified it. He came in. Um, I think Parkinson's points per game was 1.69. His was 1.78. So a bit of a difference. He did slow off towards the end. A bit of bad bad fortunes and a couple of defeats in there. But he brought Aidan McGeady back in. He's got 14 assists in 28 games. Wow. That's unbelievable, yeah. you know. Four, four goals as well. I think in one game against Doncaster at home, he got four assists for Charlie White, who scored four goals. So when you've got McGeady and White that can contribute to 40 to 50 goals a season, you're, <laughs> you're only needing about 20 to 25 goals from other areas. And you've got Grant Levy, who's got seven. You've got Max Power, who can chip in as well. So you've got goals from all areas as well. So uh, I do believe Lee Johnson's just kind of gone in and simplified it. And he's done it with not his squad as well. So it'd be interesting to see if he doesn't do it this time. Bit, bit of an extra budget with the new owners coming in, a young owner as well, to see um, how much they'll spend and how much they'll invest into that Sunderland squad because I think they do need it. Keep questions coming in, guys. I'm stocking them up and we'll we'll ask Ben. We'll, we'll, we'll hit them with them all in, in one go. So keep them coming. So our last playoff team then is Blackpool. And look at that. Uh, so this is um, a very, very slow rise up to eventually third position and they sneak past Sunderland at the at the end of the season so why well, I remember Ipswich beating Blackpool 4-1 earlier in the season and it wasn't working for Critchley um I take it it's clicked <laughs> Absolutely, and there's a few things for that. They let go of 21 players in the summer. They brought in 17, so it was always going to be hard. Yep, they only won one game in the first seven or two wins in the first nine, but they also brought in Colin Calderwood, who's an experienced head mm. in the EFL. You know, he's got a lot of experience, and Critchley was wanting to play this fast attacking football that he did with Liverpool's under-23s. That doesn't always quite work in League One, especially in the winter period when pitches are starting to get a bit dug up and you're playing on them more. He's just got a bit more, he's still playing good football, but the, the winning games that they weren't before, and 22 wins from the final 39 games, 22 clean sheets, it's an unbelievable record. And the record against a good side, you know, Holy won and drawn against, Peterborough they won twice against, he beat Portsmouth home and away, Oxford they win and draw against as well. Sunderland did the double over towards the back end of the season, 2 1 0 wins there. And then Lincoln, he did struggle against, they only got one point out of six set, they were 2 0 up. That's been the costly of Blackpool season. They've had a lot of leads to, uh, to, I think it was Wimbledon earlier on in the season. They had a lead against Lincoln, 2 0 up. And then if you, they've dropped about nine to 12 points from winning positions. And that's ultimately, unfortunately, cost them a top two. Brilliant. Um, Kieran, thank you. Two pounds super chat. Obviously, because Ben's given up his time. If you do super chat today, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll split it and we'll do a clandestine deal. Um, behind the scenes, but thank you, um, Kieran. strikes me that the two teams that are trending up the most sort of significantly are playing each other. Oxford and Oxford and Blackpool are the ones that are ones that are going like that. Would you agree with that? Absolutely, I would, because, you know, they, they're very good to watch. And Blackpool beat Oxford 3-0 a few weeks ago, and it was a very routine win for Blackpool. I thought Oxford were poor, but Oxford, I think, won six out of the last seven games to get into the playoffs, which uh, is always a good, good sign to get in. Uh, there was a time for Blackpool where they went 16 games unbeaten. It started with a 1-0 win over Rochdale at home and ended with a 1-0 defeat at Rochdale away. So, you know, but three defeats in 26 of Blackpool. They recovered well from that 16-game unbeaten run. They, they lost two games to Rochdale and Shrewsbury, but then went unbeaten in four games, keeping three clean sheets in the last three games. So it's going to be interesting to see that one because Oxford like to score goals. 
Blackpool have only conceded 16 goals in 2021, only 37 all season, 22 clean sheets. So it'd be interesting to see how Ox would do against the quite tight at the back Blackpool side that if they nick one, that's how they normally win games is because we'll nick one, but you're not conceding, you're not scoring against us today. That defensive record, is that down to, that's not necessarily head it, kick it, clear it, tackle. That's keeping the ball, isn't it? Absolutely. And they've only averaged just under 50% in possession, but they're very solid at the back and they don't make rash decisions. That's what that's one thing that they are good at. They can play through the lines, but they can also, you know, go along if you want. There's more than one way to skin a cat in there in football. So um, it'll be it, it's gonna be interesting to see because Oxford like to press, you know, they've got an energetic front three, Matty Taylor, Shapu do up front as well. And they like to work hard. So um but Blackpool have got some young centre halves at the back, you know, Dan Ballard on loan from Arsenal as well. They've got husband slightly out of position um, at left hand side of defence. So, um, but you know, they're, they're very well settled and they're very comfortable and uh, they look very good on the ball and composed. So it's going to take a, a good Oxford side to break that Blackpool defence down, I feel. Interesting. Um, let's look at the managers because only really one of them is going to be well known to championship fans. Um, that being Lee Johnson, we've got Michael Appleton, Neil Critchley, and I suppose Carl Robinson's been up and down the divisions, but not really. Was it? Was he in? Um, he might have been in with MK in yes, the championship. I think possibly, yeah. But we're going back four or five years. Um, it, which one do you want to start? We're talking about Neil Critchley. Then he's a Liverpool um, uh, age manager, wasn't he? Yes, he under twenty threes, and he came in towards the back end of last season. And Simon Grayson was there now the Fleetwood Town manager. He. Started the season very well during the playoffs up to Christmas and then went one win in 12 where and Fleetwood went one win in 12 at this particular time. But we got eight draws. They lost the eight games. He eventually lost his job. And Neil quickly came in just before, obviously, um, coronavirus came in. Didn't, um, and then had the Fleetwood game, had the Tramway game, only drew, he drew one and lost one. But again, got his own players in and then... It's just happened ever since, you know. Young managers make mistakes. I think he has done a few this season, but um, I've been very impressed with how he's gone about his business in the second half of the season. I think he's getting better and better, and uh, a young manager de- to a young manager to definitely um, look out for. Would he have been working with Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott, and I'm trying to think those centre halves that are in the Reece in Williams the, and Nat Phillips. Yeah, in the in the so he's yeah he's sometimes it's hard, isn't it? Because no disrespect to League One players, often Liverpool under twenty threes are actually a high caliber of higher caliber of player than a League One player, and technically very good. So um, it's it's good. I, I like it when people back themselves and they take that path. What about Carl Robinson then? Long in the tooth, been around a long time. Um, what's what's your what's your take on him at Oxford? I love him. I think he, he speaks as he finds. He he gets his side to play an attack, fast, flick football. He is kind of one of those managers that he's kind of frustrating at times because he's he, like, why why can we end like this but not start like this? But he's done very good jobs at MK Dons. He was in a difficult situation at Charlton. He was there for just over a year, you know, and he's done very well at, at a stable Oxford United. You know, he's got his, his, like you said at the start of the show, Ben, he's lost some good players, you know, Tariq Fossu being one, Rob Dickey at the back, but he's replaced them very well. You know, he's brought Matty Taylor and he got 17 goals last season. He's got 18 this season and he finds goals from all over the park. He's got Cameron Brannigan, who used to play at Liverpool as well, under 23s. So he manages very well. He's a very good man manager as well. He's, he knows how to treat a player as well. So I'm a big fan of him and... Uh, Every time Fleetwood has not got a manager he's the, and he, he's out of a job, he's always first on my list because uh, I like the guy and I like the way he plays football because it, that's how football should be played, on the floor and in team spaces. Interesting. Um, what we'll do about Lee Johnson is I'm going to give you my perception. I'm going to ask you whether it's changed <laughs> since he's okay. been in league. Well, so um, the perception of Lee Johnson is obviously streaky Lee, Bit of a fast talker, um, bit of little man syndrome, but sometimes his teams look really, really good, and then they um, go on strange runs afterwards. Um, how's Lee Johnson in League One? More of the same? Funny, funny enough, mate. Um, the he <laughs> went on the twelve or thirteen game on beaten run. Blackpool were on a couple of games extra than that, and then it ended actually with a defeat. I think I, I think it was a couple of, a couple of months ago, and then. 
I think they've only won one out of the last nine or ten oh, games and they've gone on an awful run. Um, he does love his animal comparisons, you know. And, uh, <laughs> uh, he, do, he does love a good one of them. Um, but, yeah, he's, um, you know, he's very, you know, fast talker, but he's very, you know, kind of low tone, if you get what I mean. But I like him as a manager. I think if he gets his own players in, he's had a team we used to deal with. Dion Sanderson at the back, he did a big blow. On loan from Wolves, he's been a very, very good player this year. Lost him. So, I, I think he's been a big blow. And I think if he gets his own players, and I think they'll go one better if they don't go up this year. And Michael Appleton seems to have been, quote, highly rated for about 10 years now, yeah. doesn't he? He seems to have gone through... Did he go through like the system at West Brom and yeah. um, with Dan Ashton and um, when, when West Brom were in the Premier League? But... Um, Lincoln look good this season, don't they? Absolutely, they do. And obviously, he's got experience. But some good experiences, some bad experiences. Obviously, he was there at Leicester. And as a coach, he'd been kind of struggling clubs at the time with Blackpool and Blackburn. But he came to Lincoln again, backed himself to become a manager again. And he replaced the Cowleys. And to replace the Cowleys, you've got to be good. Because the Cowleys, double promotion, an FA Cup run, you know, over 60% win record. And played good football and he didn't start too well and Lincoln fans were questioning him and I believe that some clubs were disappointed by this pause of football in March last year, me being one. I think Lincoln were, I think that break did them good because they could have a minute, take a breath and go, right, where do we need to strengthen? And they brought some good players in, they brought Brennan Johnson into the football club who's been superb, George Grant as well. And, you know, they, they just added to the strength that they already had. To finish 16th last year and then to finish 5th this year, it's a big improvement. And they play fast football, they play energetic football, and um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of them as well. And you can find a great interview with Brennan Johnson's dad, David Johnson, who's one of my favourite Ipswich players, elsewhere on the channel. So I do have a bit of a vested interest in, um, in Brennan Johnson's career. They're clang, name drop. It's not a name drop if you acknowledge it afterwards, is it? Ten goals, um, five assists this year. Very good, very good season. How old is he? How old is he, Ben? I think he's in his twenties, but he's you know I think he's on loan from Forest, and uh, I'm told by a lot of Forest fans how highly he's rated. But um, Lincoln have a good connection with um, Nottingham Forest. Obviously, you got Tyler Walker, Tyler last year, Walker, who yeah. scored a brace against us, and then went back to Forest and scored against Leeds last season. And um, I, I'm a big fan of him now at Coventry. Keep your questions coming in. We will get to them in a bit. There's loads of them stocked up in there. Um, let's talk star men here. Now, I've got for you, Ben, the um, the who scored projection. It's not necessarily the team that will play. Um, it just picks up who's been most used in um, each sort of position. So, Oxford, that's what who scored have come up with there. Stevens, Longmore. Atkinson, Ruffles, Kelly, Rodriguez, Brannon, Henry, Taylor, Shadipo. Um, I'm going to do a watch along on this one. Who should I be looking out for um, for Oxford, Ben? Well, there's, they've got a lot of good players. You know, I mentioned before, um, Matty Taylor, 18 goals this season. You've got Shapudu on 10 goals as well. Brand is he, is he on loan? Sorry to interrupt, Ben. Is he on loan from QPR? Is that... Chifudu. I think he is, yes. Yeah. Um, and he does like a good midweek goal, I've heard as well. Most of his goals have come <laughs> in the midweek. Um, one, of it, one of the Oxford fans was asking him, why can't you just add him on to a Saturday as well? But Matty Taylor, again, 35 goals across one and three quarter seasons. It really is. That's a very good goal tally. We've got Brannigan in midfield, who I'm a big fan of as well. He can add it to you as well. You know, so... I, I like them a lot. They can add goals from defence as well. You know, corner set pieces. They do like to score from set pieces as well. But they're very good in open play as well. And uh, be interesting to see how how they do uh, those couple of plays because um, in recent years they've been very good in the smaller games. But in the bigger games, Oxford have struggled in my opinion. The, you know, the playoff finals. Um, Lincoln. I think you've already mentioned them. Um, I happen to know that Monsma is a bit of a beast from set oh. plays. Uh, Teo Aiden, we had on loan at Ipswich. That's a name that is ringing a bell there. Bridcut, he's played for years, hasn't he, at higher, higher level. And you've already mentioned Brennan Johnson. Would it be amongst those names or is there anyone I'm missing there, Ben? 
Yeah, I think there's another one missing. I think Scully um, at Lincoln. I think he's a very, very good player. He's got 11 goals this season, four assists. So, again, 15 goal contributions. I'm not even in that list. It just shows you how stre strength in depth Lincoln have got. And, you know, I'm a big fan of him. He scored against Bristol Rovers a couple of weeks ago. He doesn't score against Bristol Rovers this season. But <laughs> he got the goal, that, you know, proved to be the winner and uh, three points. So, we've got a very good team, Lincoln. And, you know, a lot of these playoff teams have a lot of good plays, and I'm, I'm very excited to see these individual battles. Is there any point me even asking you this one when they have a player who's got 25 goals and a player who's got a thousand assists as well? <laughs> but there's the Sunderland um, most used players there: Burge, uh, Power, Sanderson, O'Neill, McFadden, Ledbitter, Scowen, Diamond, McGeady, O'Brien, and Charlie Wyke. Is it is it as obvious as it seems? Obviously, it is, and he's not scored a penalty this year, Charlie White. Where um, how many has he, he got? Twenty. He's got twenty-five. Twenty-five goals, Ben. Yeah, and he'd, he'd be actually level on goals if you took Johnson Clark Carroll's penalties away, which for me shows a good sign. He wasn't really rated at the start of the season. I know he scored against Fleetwood earlier on this season, and which proved out to be a one-one draw. And he's that type of player that if you if you put the ball into the box, you'll nine out of times out of ten you'll score, and that's what. Aidan McGeady can do. You've seen 14, got 14 assists, four goals this season. You know, he, he's an unbelievable player, Aidan McGeady. You've got Led Bitter as well, who, who who's a very good powerhouse in midfield, seven goals this season. So, you've got a couple of good players, Sunderland. More kind of on two players. I, I think I compare them to the Son and Kane of the League One. But Buendia um, and Pookie, yeah? Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. Um, Blackpool... Uh, Maxwell, Turton, Ballard, Thornley. Who did I see him play for? Thornley. Sheffield Wednesday, wasn't it? Yes. Garber, Hamilton, Ward. Garber and Ward, the ex Ipswich link up there. Dougal, Kakai, um, Yates, who scored loads, hasn't he? And Sims. Um, talk to me about those, Ben. I'm just going to quickly get my cards plug for a second time. So keep talking, yeah? I, absolutely. And Sully, Sully Kai Kai. Again, his contract runs out at the end of the season. He's just gone on a good run. He scored a goal of the, a goal of the month con uh, winner um, last month. He got seven goals, eight assists this season. A very good uh, round tally. Jerry Yates, 20 goals this season. An unbelievable time. Considering he struggled in the first seven to eight games, I think he's had a, a very, very good season. Chris Maxwell, 22 clean sheets. Ballard on loan from Arsenal. He's grown and grown. Kenny Dougal, the former Barnsley man. Uh, very, very good midfielder. Never stopped running. I think I compared him to the Great Wall of China when we played against him. We won one nil. He was just unbelievable. You just couldn't get through him. And uh, again, Black will have quality spread across a few more plays, in my opinion, and that could do them uh, very well in the playoffs. We've also got Gary Medine, the former Cardiff City man, um, just back to the playoffs as well. And uh, I think Blackpool fans call him Gary Goals and uh, very good target man and he can score goals at this level as well. £6 million player, Gary Redeen, once when he went to Cardiff, wasn't he? Uh, ben, before we get on to your actual little take on how these games are going to go, very, very quickly, get yourself one of these. Hold it the right way up. Get yourself one of these bad boys at cardsplug.com, cardsplug com slash bloom you've got to go in the tradesman's entrance but you're going to get 20% off if you do that and you enter the discount code bloom at checkout these stats have been scientifically worked out they are my exact stats yes I do have 95 for passing uh, so 20% off your order at cards plug visit cardsplug.com slash bloom if you've got a gamer in the family and you want to buy a present or something a uh, good little gimmick they'll give you a little thing to fix it on the wall as well um cardsplug.com slash bloom right then now we don't expect someone to give up their time and then give their prediction on this channel so if you do want ben's actual predictions you're gonna have to go to his channel to go and get them when are your videos up for them but we're gonna i'm gonna upload them monday and uh Hopefully okay. we can get a few predictions off you, Ben, and see. Uh, <laughs> let's let's see let's see who gets them right. But uh, oh, no, normally with predictions, you know what they're going to be like. Uh, we'll be away off and we'll get moaned that like we we'd know beforehand. So Ben's going to talk us through each of the games, but to get his predictions, you're going to need to go over to the Cods Vlog, um, Cods whatever, Cods Vlogs channel um, over on YouTube. So um, be sure to go and subscribe as well, because as you can see, he's a great lad giving up his time um, and 
very very knowledgeable as you can as you can hear so i need your predictions in the chat let's just say thank you to tony um a brilliant works excellent analysis guys hope you do more stuff together if you like him he said he'll come back so um if you want more nappers um then um yeah ask for it and and you will get 99 excitement absolutely 98 hair 97 fleetwood knowledge on on Ben's. Actually, if you follow him on Instagram, you'd have stamina 99, wouldn't you? I've seen your running stats off the off the treadmill. Very impressive. Um, very would, would impressive. Would it be, be 99 points off the playoffs? That's what he's about. It would be nil nil 99, wouldn't they? Yeah. Dear me. But hey, God, I'll tell you some players we've been linked with when this stops recording and you will laugh. <laughs> You'll laugh. I've seen, I've seen 60 million transfer budget. I'm like, eh? 40, yeah, 40. See, it's already getting exaggerated, isn't it? Right. So, Ben, talk me through this matchup, sixth place versus third place and um, Blackpool versus Oxford. The two teams trending up. Um, just talk to me about what sort of game it's going to be. Remember, if you want Ben's predictions in the chat, please um, give us give us this one. Oxford draw or Blackpool in the chat, please. Oxford draw or a Blackpool, um, give me your predictions. Just first leg, guys. We only, we only want to know about the um, first leg. Um, let me know in the chat, Oxford draw or Blackpool. What sort of game is this going to be then, Ben? I think it's going to be very entertaining. I think the first leg will be cagey, but Oxford, I feel, will have to go for it. Blackpool are very good at home, but so are Oxford. Oxford have got the third best home form in the division this year, and that's proved them well. But Blackpool are very good. Away from home, you look at it. Blackpool have won 23 games. Oxford have won 22 games in all, um, all in in League One this season. At the 46 games, I think, you know, it's going to be. I think it's going to be decided on the first leg. I think if it's a draw. I think I fancy Blackpool. If it's going to be an Oxford win, I'd fancy them to see out the job. Oxford are very good from set pieces. They scored 17 goals from set pieces, where Blackpool scored 15. So I'd watch out for free kicks, penalties, corners as well. So they could be very, very pivotal. I think Blackpool scored a corner against Oxford in the last meeting as well, which proved to be a 3-0 Blackpool win. So very interesting to see. Also, Oxford have only taken four points out of the other three teams, Lincoln, Sunderland and Blackpool in the playoffs. Blackpool have taken 21 out of the game. So, um, out of, sorry, uh, with Portsmouth as well in there as well. So, been very, very good this season and um, be interesting to see who comes out on top. Did you see how mixed it was in the chat? Oxford, Oxford, Blackpool, Oxford, Blackpool, Blackpool, draw, Blackpool, Oxford, Blackpool. You ain't going to get any help from that, are you? We're, we're, <laughs> a, bit, we're a bit mixed. Even, even game, despite... Oh, it's only, a, it's only a six point gap sometimes as you just get this ominous gap. And believe me, Ipswich have been on the end of two 10 point gaps and lost from third place over the over the years. Right, get your predictions in for next Wednesday night Lincoln City versus Sunderland. So in the chat, please, Lincoln draw or Sunderland. Uh, Lincoln draw or Sunderland. Uh, there you go. You've got a new subscriber there, Ben. And Nat's great. And he's a Wednesday fan. So he'll be with you. Nat. It'll be with you. All, it'll be with you all season. A proper loyalist there. Um, uh, yeah. By the way, if you followed my channel and you are a um, Wednesday Lincoln or Rotherham fan, um, do go and subscribe to uh, Ben's channel. Right. How, how's this one gonna um, gonna look, uh, Ben? Lincoln versus Sunderland. We're at Lincoln. Absolutely, it's gonna be a close one. Sunderland have scored seventy goals this season, and Lincoln have scored sixty nine goals. So it's very very close. You know, Lincoln have, Lincoln have conceded 50 goals, Sunderland 42. So there's not much in it between goals scored and goals conceded as well. So I would expect a tighter game. I think this is going to be one in the second leg, if I'm honest with you. I think Sunderland 10,000 home fans could make a huge difference. And they've missed them this season, Sunderland. They've drawn a lot of games at home. Uh, but going back onto the first leg, Lincoln, Lincoln fans are, in my opinion, one of the best in Sky Bet League. One, they'll make a huge difference. Not so good at home, Lincoln. Nine defeats out of the 23 games this season. So, But I do believe it's going to be a close, closely anticipated fixture. And uh, it's going to, if it's going to be one, it's going to be one from a mistake or a set piece, I believe, Ben. Beautiful. Just see what the chat was saying then. I was putting them up, but I wasn't really um, wasn't really <laughs> paying attention to which ones they, which way it was going. Right, Lincoln, Lincoln, Lincoln. Sunderland, Lincoln, Sunderland. 
Lincoln Hart, Sunderland Head. That's a hedge of the bets. Sunderland, 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 Sunderland. Uh, playoffs, isn't it? We're right down, we're right down the middle on the predictions here. Um, so guys, I will be um I will watch along these games. So I'll be here on Tuesday the 18th and Wednesday the 19th at 6 p.m. for both of those. So do come and check those ones out. Ben, before we go to questions, can you just talk to me a bit about what championship fans can expect from Peterborough and Hull. Congratulations to both. We probably know more about Hull than we do about Peterborough, um, given we've had them for the last five of the last six years in the championship anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I'll go to Peterborough. They've been nearly, I, I think I've compared them to the Brentford of League One. They've always got a very good squad. They sell, they sell players, but bring, you know, better players in, in my opinion, and make good profits. You know, they don't spend without the means as well. But this year, they finally did it. They brought Sammy Smoddix in from Bristol City. They brought Clark Harrison um, from Bristol Rovers. They brought, um, they kept Christy Pym. They kept Dan Butler. They kept Beavers. They kept the spine of their team and just topped it up with a bit of talent thickened out the squad and he thought, right, what do we need? And Peterborough, I've labelled as soft in the past when they've gone on bad runs towards the end of the season. Not this year. They were, they were winning games in the last minute. That's how they came up with a, a, a draw over Lincoln. They beat Fleetwood 1-0, last, pretty much last kick of the game, twice. I uh, couldn't believe that. And then, you know, they, they just go to outscore the opposition, you know, score twos, threes, fours and fives. I think they've got, I think they've got seven or eight against Accrington Stanley a couple of weeks ago as well. So I'd expect a very attacking lineup from Peterborough. But in the Championship, when you need to get to that 50 point mark that everyone tries to get to, I think they'll be a, a little bit more cautious than they are this year because they might not have the quality to outscore the better sides, if you like. And Hull, again, they're, they're the same. They've got some good players. You know, they brought Louis Coyle in from Fleetwood. They brought uh, Docker to you in this season, who was on loan at Shrewsbury a few years ago from, I think it was Rangers. They've, Josh McGinnis, the former chart man, got 17 goals this season. An unbelievable tally. They've got Malik Wilkes, who's had time at Barnsley, hasn't he? And then, you know, I think, again, they're another good side that will... I, I don't think they'll challenge top six or top ten, but I think they'll be in and around the middle. I like Peter Brad, but I'm interested to see how they both do, especially Peter Brad, because um, I think they, they, they finally deserve to go up. Yeah, Peter Brad could be could be a lot of fun, and whilst it might not work against Big Sam and um, West Brom, it'd be <laughs> nice to see a team. I mean, if you look at someone like Coventry, who were just a little bit more attacking than the other two League One promoted teams, and yeah, I think the league table tells that. Right, get your questions in. I've scrolled all the way. Um, back up uh, and Ben will take some questions here. I'll chip in if I've got anything to add. Probably not. Uh, ben, who was the best team Fleetwood played this season? And I'll add, are they in the four playoff places? Oh, that's a tough question. Very good question. Because when we played Oxford, they beat us 1-0. They weren't very, they weren't the best and we beat them 2 0 early in the season. I'm going to go, I'm going to go for Peter Brad because they weren't great in the two games over us, but I judge teams on, did they win the game first of all? Yes. Did they create chances against us? Yes. But they, they won two games. They won one down against us at home, second game of the season. They lost the first game, by the way, to Wackington Stanley 2-0. They've got a habit of starting slow, then going on a good run in the middle and ending slow. So it was important that they won. 92nd minute, 1-0 down. 94th minute, two goals in two minutes, they win the game. In April, nil nil, win a free kick, Clark Harris round the wall into the far corner, one nil. Two wins there, you've just got six points from pretty much the last de decades of the game, and you know that 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 for me is promotion slash champions mentality. And so I'm gonna have to go for Peter on that one, but good question. Uh, which team do you think would be the best suited to become a consistent championship team? So out of the four, then Blackpool, Sunderland, uh, Lincoln, Oxford. Um, some people think Sunderland have got a Premier League set up, let alone a Championship set up, don't they? Um, I'm not going to go for Sunderland because I think that's a boring answer, but I'm going to go out with the, three, the other three. I think Blackpool have a good ownership now and they'd be stable. I think they need to sort the, the training ground out because you know then they can attract better players. Oxford, again, are a stable League One club. I think they could do the business in the Championship as well, but... Lincoln, you know, it'd be a dream for them to get up there. I'm going to go for Blackpool because, you know, they've got the money now, they've got the good ownership, they've got the ground, they've got, 
they've got pretty much everything that they need, barring the training ground. And they've got the supporters to match with. They've got eight to 9,000 that can rise to 12 or 13K. And they've been in the championship in recent years as well. Uh, football timelines. Uh, hi, lads. Really enjoying the discussion. How much do you think momentum matters coming into the playoffs? And when we're talking momentum, we're talking Oxford, really, aren't they? Did you yeah. say six six wins in seven? Absolutely. And you remember Millwall a few years ago, they were they were down there and they got on to sixth on the last day and Barnes, they were bottom of League One and then Heckenbottom came in and they were unbelievable and came in with great momentum. Oxford have, are buzzing to be there, you know. They, that's all they were thinking about. They were never thinking top two now, where they were last season. Now they're thinking buzzing, top six, three games away. Imagine saying this a week ago, we weren't in this situation, whereas... Blackpool, Lincoln and Sunderland have been around it for a little bit longer. Blackpool especially been around it since February, March time. Maybe a few worries that they, they could have got into the top two, especially for my end. Imagine them going up top two. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say Oxford have the momentum and I think that could really carry them because momentum, scoring goals, confidence, and they can just attack teams, whereas the other three might be a bit of conservative because they've, seen, they've gone on a few... Sunderland especially gone on a bit of a bad run, so they don't want to go 1-0 down because they might not have the ability to come back. Lincoln, again, they lost a few games of late. They won't want to go 1-0 down. So I think Oxford will go hell for leather, and I think it's theirs to win. Um, just a football timelines question. Yesterday, and this is going up tomorrow, I recorded a playoff myths video. So oh. I may or may not be discussing whether momentum works in the playoffs, but I'll keep my, I'll keep my powder dry. This is Adam... Any teams to look out for in League One, Wednesday fan, next season? League One teams to look out. Now, remember who's interviewing you here, Ben. You need to play to the you need to play to the gallery here, don't you? Well, obviously, Ipswich are gonna <laughs> are gonna have a, a chance for a window. I've always said about Paul Cook, he needs time. Look what he did at a trouble in Chesterfield, a trouble in Wigan, and a trouble in Portland. That is three clubs that he's won. You know, he's done a lot with, you know, and I think he's a very, very good manager and he needs his own place to buy into his own culture. He's having a massive clear out rumoured apparently as well, which I think Ipswich need. I think they'll get players that want to play for Ipswich and like, Ipswich are a massive club, we want to fight. Bolton again, they've got new ownership. You know, Bolton, Evan, I, I forgot coming from the other end. Yeah. Some big, big clubs in League One, isn't there, for God's sakes. I know, it's, it's like it's like a... A championship mini league, really. <laughs> championship like, graveyard, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, but you got Bolton who again, Evan put his own plays in, in January, and they went on an unbelievable run, finishing uh third in the end. And then you've got you know the likes of you've got at least one of Sunderland, Oxford, Blackpool, or Lincoln, uh, Pompey, at least, Charlton, at least three of those. You've got yeah, Portsmouth, Charlton, um, so many more to name, really. You know, it's it's going to be it's going to be a tough league, and you've got Shelton who. who I think we'll come up and have a go as well. I think they'll be very, very good to watch. Well, Wigan, again, could possibly have a good season. You know, Liam Whitson, we can give it a new three-year deal. A bit of a budget there now. So, you know, there's a lot of names. But if I had to give you one to watch out for, I'd go I'd go Ipswich because I'm interested to see how they'll do with their their, t their new takeover, the new the new manager getting his own players in and uh, who they'll bring in. I feel like I bullied you into that answer in the end, didn't I? Oh, no, you, no, you didn't. You didn't bully <laughs> I'm interested in your thoughts on this, actually, because this goes back, and we're having the same thing with Brentford in the Championship. You know, does a does a playoff defeat in whatever, however many years ago, um, matter? But I was at Sunderland, Charlton, the not the classic one in '98. I was at the one in '18, '19, and lost in the last minute, didn't they? Um, Sunderland also under my old mate Mick McCarthy lost to Palace in 2003 4 I'm trying to I'm trying to think that someone will know better than me in the mm -hmm. in the chat is it is it in the players heads um I think it is there but again I think you, you've got to forget your history I think it's a bit like look at Tottenham you know they haven't won a trophy for 12 to 13 years is that there is that something that's glaring down I do think it'll be there. But you look at the opposite to Sunderland, Blackpool, the most successful team in the playoffs. Five promotions from eight. They're unbeaten in the last 10 semi-final ties. 16 wins out of 23. So it's the complete opposite. They've got to... We've, we've done it before. Can we do it again? And it's like... I think you just got to forget it. I think you're like... 
we, we're nothing like that squad years ago. We, you know, we're better now. Our, our tactics there. I think you just got to forget it. You, it's this season. It's another chance to go up. Forget what's happened in the past. It's here and now. And uh, like you say, it's these myths. You know, or oh, we never win on Sky. Or you know, it's, you know it, <laughs> manager happens, of the month curse. Yeah, manager of the month curse. And it's like. Believe facts that you want to believe, but I think you just got to believe in your squad. If I'm honest with you, hundred um, percent. I should say, Lee, and this is great, and we don't get a chance very often. I met Lee the other day. He was he was driving by, and we had a socially distanced cup of tea. So it's great because I've been chatting to Lee for ages. Is there any chance? Um, obviously, he wants him at Sheffield United, but is there any chance that they would immediately? You talked about the Peterborough model. Um, being similar to the Brentford model. Brentford have never been scared to sell anybody. No. Any chance that they would literally immediately cash in on Clark Harris and buy three players with the... Or, or would you rather go into the season with him? Well, McCanton has already said he's had £7 to £8 million pounds inquiries about him. And I think that... McCanton, he says a lot of stuff, Ben. He, 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 like, <laughs> he does say a lot of stuff and you know on his podcast, but I don't choose to always believe him. I... I think he'd suit the Sheffield United model. I think he's like David McGoldrick. He, even when he's not scoring goals, he works hard for the team. He can hold the ball. He'll run through the trenches through for you. He's a good. He's a good lad. He, you know, he works hard as well. So I think he'd suit Sheffield United. Who are are based on that model, especially under Wilder, that are, are working hard out. If we don't win, you know, we'll we'll give our all and we'll go till the end. And I think he'd suit Sheffield United. But I don't think people will want to sell because. It's hard getting a goal scorer for the championship. And, you know, especially with Clark Harris, he's flying top goal scorer this year. He'll go into next season believing and um, hopefully score some goals for them. But I can't see them selling this year. Uh, people are very, see, you're right about Peter, but people are very interested to see how they're going to go. Uh, you talked about the open style. Um, do you think, it, uh, Chris is asking, do you think it would be seriously exposed, especially away from home? And can I parlay that into? Um, if they do take that approach for the whole season, will they beat enough teams to, you know, they may have a, they may have a, I don't know, score 65 goals, but concede 75 or something, but that might, that might be enough to beat the teams below. But I think we'd all agree with, with maybe Chris's assertion there that if they go away to West Brom, yeah. Fulham, whoever's left out of um, the playoff teams, Brentford, Swansea, um, they may get picked off with that style. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, they've not got a bad defence, Frankie Kent, Nathan Thompson, Mark Beavers. I do think they'll need to add to it, though. They remind me of Leeds a bit and uh, Holloway's Blackpool when they went up to the Premier League. They didn't sign any defenders um, at all and they stuck with the ones that they knew. And in the end, in my opinion, that's what cost them. Could that happen the same with Peterborough? Possibly. Add a couple of defenders, add a couple maybe up front and I think you'll be OK. But um, it'd be interesting to see how Peterborough do the business. I don't think... McCann, he'll want to splash his money too easily. I think he'll be looking towards, you know, a more reliable League One, League Two player that's had a, a good time. I think maybe possibly someone like a, a Boyle at Cheltenham could uh, do the job, uh, especially at Peterborough, because they like to bring players in and sell them on for a bigger fee. And I think he'd suit their defence and maybe shore them up a little bit. Brilliant. Um, Caps Cow underscore. Did Pompey miss their chance to go up a couple of years ago? And can I add to that? They're, they're not going anywhere, though. Surely their level is always going to be pushing at the top of League One, even if they, even if he's right and they did miss their chance, especially with Cowley. It's another big club, isn't it? Yeah, and Cowley said he wants at least eight summer signings this season. Will that happen? I think I think it will. They, they, remember, they've lost a lot of good players. They lost Clark, who went to, he went to Brighton. He's been on loan at Derby, hasn't he? And then they lost Jamel Lowe, who's been flying this season at Swansea. So, already then, I think they've lost the two best players. In actually, the last two Player of the Season awards, they've lost their Player of the Season. Craig McGilvery was this year. Will he stay? I think he do. I think he will stay. But uh, when you lose that, you, you know, you lose your better players. So, I do think they missed the chance a few years ago. I think they're the, the strongest squad in the division. And um, they went on a, an awful run. They also, that season, lost Ben Thompson. He, he was flying up till January. Millwall called him back, played him a lot. Play, good player, Ben Thompson. Very yeah. good player. And, you know, he scored a thunderbolt against Fleetwood. hit the bar and went in from range. I just, I, I, I watched him and I thought, 
this lad oozes talent and they lost him and they lost kind of the way for a, a six to eight weeks. And then by the time they got it back, it was too late for automatic. So they had to settle for the playoffs. But I can see where you're coming from. But Portsmouth will always, while they've got the Cowleys, while they've got the good ownership in the end, Esners, I think they'll always push at League One level. Again, Ben's words there, good ownership in the Esners. I'm sure we get lots of pushback from, from Pompey fans about that. Um, Stable, though. They're, they're never going to go into oh, the extension again. You're preaching to the choir about that, yeah. Um, Armoury Circular Campos, that's not one of those things where I say it and then I've been tricked into saying something <laughs> incredibly libelous. Where do you see Wimbledon in the future? Championship, League Two, obviously... Um, battled away at the bottom of League One and Ipswich decided to give them four points at the end of the season, didn't they? And um, that's how many points they survived by. Um, where's Wimbledon eventually going to stabilise then, Ben? I think I think they'll stabilise towards 12th and 18th in League One. I think that'd be very good. I predicted them 19th at the start of the year, finished 19th. Uh, everyone blamed them going down, but, you know, it's one of those like Burnley situations, you know, the tactics, basic, you know, you know, play to the strengths, get the ball to pig it, and hopefully you can score. You know, work hard. You <laughs> work know, against Ipswich. <laughs> absolutely, he's got twenty goals. I think he's got twenty-five goal contributions. That's over nearly fifty percent of their goals. And you know, they, they do what they can do well. Score a lot from set pieces. You know, stable as well. You know. They've given Mark Robertson the job. They do like a good sacking halfway through the season. The manager comes in, <laughs> keeps them up, then it happens again. So how long will that work for? I don't know. But I like Wimbledon and I hope they carry on staying up. But I believe Wimbledon in the next five, six years will still be in League One with their mentality and their ambition. I'll preface this one. We'll make this the last one, guys, and then we'll uh, finish up. Liam is a big MK Dons fan, but don't let that influence your answer. They're going to improve next season. Well, they finished thirteenth this season, and they got some. They had some good players, you know, Sermon, Cameron, Jerome, um, you know, and a couple of good players. About Lewington's been there ages, like you said, Ben. They, they must have over a thousand appearances between yeah, him, him and Coppinger. Coppinger. Yeah, uh, absolutely. You know, stalwart at the back. Russell Martin's got them playing the right way, passing football, over sixty-five percent possession. I think it is per game, and I do believe they'll get better and better. And I think it's a three-year plan this year stabilise the mid-table next season, push towards the playoffs, third year playoffs. I think that's how it's got to be. And I think if them, if he keeps getting the players that he wants, keeps getting good apples, keeps getting his goal scorers in, I believe there'll be uh, a threat in the next uh, two to three years. Absolutely. Brilliant stuff. So that is our League One playoff semi-final. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And as ever, and we've had to say this a few times this week, with some new partners um uh, sort of announced. Thank you for welcoming um, Ben along with open arms. The plan is, and we can vaguely reveal this now, that the dearly departed League One show next season, which will be covering uh, the teams that have been relegated, and maybe we'll pick out a couple more that I've covered before, will be um, featuring Ben. So um, please give him an endorsement um, in the chat. Let us know. Um, as I say, the League One version of me, frankly. Um, nerd, nerd. Wait, <laughs> yeah, quite. I'll take it. I'll take it. Um, before we go, um, I'll let you do your plugs in a second, um, Ben. I'll just do mine real quickly. Thank you again to the Donovan Brothers, who sponsor all of our preview shows. We're nearly there now, aren't we? In loving memory of Michael Donovan of South Island, a lifelong Millwall fan, admirer of these shows. Thank you to the Donovans for their support through the season. Another plug for Patreon. I know a couple of people are dropping off Patreon as the season finishes. I'm still so, so grateful for your support. And come back next season. We should be three exclusive shows on Patreon. Thank you for the super chats. They will be split with um, with Ben. Um, maybe once we've done a few more shows, we'll add it all up and there'll be um, something more substantial to give him. And thank you, everybody. YouTube, over 16,000 now on the subscribers on YouTube. Thank you so much. Everybody always um, kicks off at the end of the season. Um, go and subscribe to Ben, but he's going to plug his channel and his Twitter right now. Go ahead, Ben. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, I'm a Fleetwood Town uh, YouTuber that does Fleetwood Town streams, but I also do League One, so I cover a managerial sacking or top tens or, you know, table predictions or, you know, my best dolls and stuff like that. So um, if you could subscribe, I'm trying to get to 7,000 by 
um, to start of next season. It's a big aim, but any help will be appreciated. And then I love being on today, Ben. So thank you for having me on. And my Twitter, FDSC Nappers, I tweet all things League One statistics. A bit like Ben, that's where I got the idea from, if I'm honest with you. I just thought something different keeps my brain ticking. And uh, uh, if you want to go and give me a follow, FDSC Nappers on Twitter and COD Vlogs on YouTube, any um, help will be appreciated. Thank you very much. Brilliant stuff, Ben. Um, so thank you, everybody, for joining us. If you want to shout out, let me know now and we'll do some shout outs uh, before we finish. Lots going on on the channel. There are um, previews already up of the two championship um, playoff semis. Dearly departed for the Premier League is in the can. I'm so busy. It's ridiculous. That's going to go up. I don't know, 4.30 or something like that. We'll, we'll stick that into the ether. Tomorrow, playoff myths. Looking forward to that. And I promise, I've had the Middlesbrough one written for about a week now. I promise I'll finish my season reviews. I've only got 30 to do, Ben. So we're. I think I've done about 10 or 11 of them. But we will get them done. It's a very, very busy time. Football 365 for written stuff. Tribalfootball.com as well for um, some more written stuff. Actually, God, I need to do a preview for them before Mondays. Oh, God. Uh, busy, we'll, we'll, busy, busy, busy. We'll get to the... Uh, hey, it's a joy, isn't it, Ben? I'm sure oh, you it's agree. It's a joy. Just talking about football the whole time. Um, right, let's do some shout-outs here. Um, where are we? Mr. E, legend. Uh, JR, legend. Leeds 2021, legend. Uh, I can't say that name. Aaron Antonopoulos. Sounds Greek to me. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Tony... Uh, Amori, uh, Lee, yeah, hit the like button before you go. Uh, Leeds 2021, any other shouts here? Um, see you soon, Ben. Scott Fraser is the Scottish Kevin De Bruyne. Nice. Better than, better than. <laughs> um, Chris um, as well, Chris, legend. Um, I've got something for you, Chris. Um, it will be revealed very, very soon. Um, right, I'm nowhere near Manchester. Just Australian football is bad. Um, well, there you go. There's, there's, there's the um, genealogy of his of his name, maybe. Right. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I will be back on a pre-record next time you see me on a stream. Will be Monday. It's the playoffs. Bring it on, and we'll try and get Ben back on. Um, whether there'll be time in between the first legs and the second legs remains to be seen, but we we'll definitely get him on before the final. So, um, say goodbye, Ben. Thank you very much, guys, and uh, I look forward to seeing you soon. It's been an enjoyable one. Have a, a good weekend and uh, an enjoyable weekend of playoff football next week. It should be a, a blockbuster. And it's a lovely over and out from me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. To see more videos from this channel, hit the subscribe button. And to be notified every time we upload, ring the bell for those notifications to come through on your device. If you really want to support the channel and me as a content creator, I will be eternally grateful if you head over to the merch store and grab something or support over on Patreon, patreon.com slash Benjamin Bloom. Thank you for your time. Go watch another video.